the floor is open, so maybe I start with with with, with our advisors. Uh, maybe, uh, um, yeah, Iñaki, Jorge, Jorge, Iñaki, Unai, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, from maybe from our side, from from our point of view, really ready with with the target of the elderly people. One of the key features. Uh, you can see within this technology is that it's really uh, adaptable. I mean, uh, how, how you mentioned before that you can kind of print these uh, electrodes. Well, mm -hmm. you know which one was the name? Not sure. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can print it and make it. I mean, you can make it. You can create different shapes with it, right? So we believe that from our point of view that that can be really interesting, not just for to, to have tactile feedback on the, the hands, but also on in the feet. Mm -hmm. So for, from our point of view in learning mm -hmm. therapies, uh, there's some therapies that use not just the hands, but also uh, the feet. Like uh, touching the grass, the feet, touching water, touching sand. So that we believe that maybe that adaptability will also be transferred to, to, to the feet. Uh, yeah, I may have more ideas, but I need to think <laughs> okay. more about it. That's the first thing that comes to mind. But you think uh, this adaptability, um, configurability, as uh, yeah. is is important when we go to to tactile sensing? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, it can be transferred to other parts of the body, not just in hands. I believe that has a, a huge potential. Okay. Any. Confirmation opposition to it or yes. Something that I was talking about this morning is the 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 setup uh, time. Yes. People need to this is for us important. Something related to uh, having the need to have different sizes, for example, depending on the uh, size of the hand for the people that are going to use the glove. This is something uh, we have, or we are trying. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know too much about the, uh, I don't have any kind of experience about the, the, the in a sense, uh, we will have the opportunity to have with this uh, kind of uh, uh, technology. But for us, when I say something about the uh, balance between cost and value, I, we are we think that uh, when we are talking about cost, we are not only talking about the price. We are talking about the operation, operational cost of having this kind of the new new devices in in a VR experience. So operational cost is related to the time needed to set up this kind of devices for the uh, need to have different depending uh, on the size. And when I talk about value, I think uh, uh, the value probably is something subjective or subjective depending on the project you are going to use this device. But probably you are going to have uh, not too much uh, capacity of, of, of uh, different feelings or sense. But enough to uh, add the great value, for example, to this experience. So this is the balance we, for example, just now found with other devices. They just say, oh, we haven't got any uh, this type of balance. And I think this is something uh, very important for mm -hmm. us in this case to add uh, to the market we know this kind of uh, new devices to our clients. Mm -hmm. Would you consider? Uh, when it takes a first setup time that is longer, but then consecutive could be fast. So maybe yeah. longer we say, um, okay, maybe a first time calibration of 20 minutes, uh, maybe a first time getting used to the technology of uh, three applications. Um, that means three hours and then you are into it and then probably a consecutive of five minutes yes, would be. Some of the uh, instances we have, we need to make uh, some kind of uh, setup uh, first time, so we don't have many problems to uh, 
best uh, one to one one to one to one would be almost in the first uh, scenario. But the problem about it is every time you need to use the device, you need to uh, have a one hour setup or half an hour setup. So if you only have to wait one setup uh, every month for somebody, I don't know what you can do on the use. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, please. Maybe it's also good to contextualize it a little. So if there's several blocks for a long time, but for example, virtual doesn't use them, right? So on that long scale, and that's something that we see that only within a specific niche, it's like with the cost and then not only operation, but just the effort of putting something on, the effort of charging batteries, the effort of having someone on site who knows how everything works. Um, in, in most cases, that is a huge consideration or a huge barrier, um, more than cost, I would say. Um, having the added benefit has to be clear, and it has to be enough benefit in that sense. Um, and, and like for the gloves that we have made so far, I would say um, a lot of companies are interested, try them out, but they realize that for broad scale, easily accessible applications, whether that's large groups, trades, or whatever that is, um, even a, a single a simple block as we have is already quite a barrier. VR itself, in many ways, is already a barrier. Um, so it's difficult. It, it's difficult, generally speaking. Um, but I would say there are definitely niches within VR that will definitely benefit from having this additional kind of experience. Whether you're assimilating some type of feedback, whether you are trying to uh, give additional feedback uh, to things you typically don't experience. Um, I would say the, not the goal, but the, the difficulty of, of this and applying all of this that we're working together is finding out like within, in, within what niche doesn't add enough benefit, but it outweighs these other barriers. Mm -hmm. Um, let me give an answer, then I come to you. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, one of my experiences is the mobile phone. So when first you had these portable uh, called Nattel mobile phones that weighed uh, five kilograms, nobody really was inclined to carry around a phone. But today everybody has two or three. Uh, carrying around. So can it be that probably that's one of the barriers that uh, at the moment in general the VR technology is not there, that people still prefer to look on a PC screen than to wear a simple glass or? Yeah, there's, there's definitely a big barrier in that sense. But I would say even now, even though Current wave of VR, so to say, is pretty fresh compared to like the, the development in the past. You already see a lot of businesses that have figured out specific things that they can only do in VR are already benefiting. Um, so that is like a confirmation of the technology and the confirmation of the added benefits. Um, behind the screen, there's nothing really physical, you can do, for example, um, which is something that in, in training, for example, uh, adds a lot. Of that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, Julia. Yeah, uh, just to uh, yeah, continue this discussion, for, for me, uh, my answer that uh, calibration is the key. I mean, uh, and I'm, I'm going to explain why. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, immersion uh, was uh, selling headsets. My, my boss is, uh, was already there and he said, I said, for our booths. Well, this uh, huge guy in the huge industry. And uh, we, we have to know that and keep in mind that at this moment, uh, headset has been cancelled and has been abandoned because uh, there were too much. Um, uh, the fact that it was a wearable device was a huge problem, huge problem. And they decided to invest more, more money, more money. To have a uh, projection and large uh, projection scale room in order to do the same thing uh, with uh, Facebook and all these aspects, uh, the price has just increased. So they decided to, okay, 
we consider the, 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 this conclusion and try to uh, think about, about this. And they, they, they're going to start to deploy more headset and, and try to go on this because the, the price was really different concerning the last case we did these two things. But we, we are all, always facing this aspect of the variable uh, aspect of such device. It, it's, it's true for the headset, it's true for the, for the blogs. It's exactly the same. And the fact that we, we're going to touch people with such devices is a, a, a really important issue in terms of uh, usability, and especially in the professional, uh, in the professional area. It, it's, it's, a, it's a real, a real problem. And, and if we have uh, devices that should uh, go further this uh, uh, threshold and propose something wearable for professional uh, use cases, we need to uh, ensure that the, um, the, the calibration will be automatic and, and, and not necessarily uh, require an expert to realize the, the process and, and, and so on, because it's going to add from issues to another issues. And it, it will be a real break for me. It will, for, from use, usage and usability perspective, it will be a real problem. It's, it's my own. I prefer something with working not so good and to do less than what we expected, but with a good calibration. For example, I think about you guys when you go to the to your kind of users, which is for they're going to have a, a scheme which is uh, probably different than ours. So then we need another calibration. And then, so it depends on, as you said, China, it depends so much about our. The chemical receptor that we need to have this automatic calibration and is this uh, aspect from my perspective. Mm -hmm. So the calibration needs to be actually integrated into the application. You use it and while you use it, it also performs maybe some calibration that it improves over time, that it adapts to your type of perception, maybe in the way how you interact, the system is intelligent enough to find out that it needs to uh, modify some of the parameters here or there, um, so that it converges towards uh, better performance over, over time. As you said, you could live with less performance in the beginning, much more than being loaded with a calibration process. Yeah, I just, I just want to add something because I'm really but uh, to go further. What I want, want to say is, for me, uh, one thing that we probably not have a uh, target, we, we don't have uh, uh, as a result because we don't have that. Uh, it's the fact: can we make an innovation concerning this uh, calibration? Because what I discovered with you guys is that the skin is is moving in time. It's moving depending on your stress, it's moving depending on your weather, depending on the, the start of the experience at the end of the experience, and the sensation is moving. And when you are providing experience as we, we are doing, uh, we would like to be sure that we, uh, the users will uh, feel what we plan uh, the uh, mm -hmm. experience. So, so what I mean is, can we imagine, uh, for example, a little calibration in real time that uh, take into account the fact that we are changing in a few minutes, something like this, which is a little bit different uh, concerning about what we plan, but uh, we can keep it this into mind of further uh, exploration. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, I see <laughs> Strahinia <laughs> saying yes. <laughs> It needs uh, tactility too, <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's, it's, another, it's another project, actually. <laughs> no, I think uh, I agree. It's, uh, very, it's a very important aspect, and uh, Mark, yeah, and uh, his uh, group are also working on this streamlining this collaboration. And we have done also something uh, based on the profiles that I've shown, these uh, intensity profiles that are very different across subjects. And um, we try to do some machine learning, right? Uh, to, for example, take some of the pets. And then measure only some pets and then uh, uh, estimate the others. Mm -hmm. And the machine learning was not that successful actually because of this variability mm -hmm. across, across subjects. But some simple procedures uh, where you 
select a couple of beds and you measure them and then you average for the others might give a very good first estimate and then you can just fine tune. So I think that uh, I'm not sure how far we will reach in the field regarding calibration, but it's a, it's a critical point. And uh, the last thing that you said about automatic calibration, there is some work. Uh, for example, there was a paper, I think it has been even published in Science Robotics, where they have a device that measures the impedance of the skin and then uh, calibrates uh, uh, objectively. Right, without involving the subject, but so objectively based on the impedance. And there you could also have this uh, uh, adaptive process mm -hmm. because people can, you know, user could start doing something, you are continuously measuring impedance or, or maybe repetitively. Uh, and then uh, if I start sweating, then you change the stimulation to maintain the same sensation. Mm -hmm. But it's not a simple thing. No, I think it's something that uh, people are working uh, on, but, but it's not a simple thing, definitely. So maybe another question that, I mean, it goes also a little bit into this direction because I think it tackles this, it from the other side. And, and that's uh, the question, is there a killer app? Because probably that's also, I mean, as we discussed just before and what Unai said, I mean, it's this relationship between what is my gain I can get, then I accept to invest or to have some pain uh, to, to, to set up the things. Um, where do you see potential killer apps um, or apps where we can think about tactile feedback is really a game changer to what at the moment can be, can be done or is done in, in, uh, in XR or VR? <laughs> yeah, in our case, I think that it's very difficult to, to answer this question because also the VR is looking also the, the killer app no? for, for the technology. I'm very difficult to, to answer. I mean, is there is there an answer here in the room that would say? It's not about the killer app that we are looking, it's the deficiency that we have for the current solutions, or I don't know. From my point of view, I don't know if that's the killer app. I, I think that uh, industrial applications, training, uh, probably, in my opinion, this could be the uh, close uh, applications of this kind of, of devices because of the money that the kind of companies are investing in VR devices, VR uh, installations, uh, the time they spend uh, doing this kind of uh, calibration and the value they are uh, going to have training these people, for example, with this kind of, this is okay. my opinion, uh, consumer, uh, or, you know, main, main industry or consumer, and my head is uh, very far as now from this kind of uh, this is my opinion. I mean, you you are you are answering okay. my other to my next yeah. question, yeah. which is yeah. no no. I, I mean, it goes yeah. really in this flow. It goes in this flow. So yes, Rahinia. Yeah. So you have to cloud also with the vibrators, because right, the traffic is the vibrators. Yeah. What was your experience with consumers so far? Like, are they excited with the weather that could be like something that they are, you know, like blown up or if they can well, they don't blow or, up, or is it something that they can just survive without? I think in general people enjoy it. They think it's really cool, but they have no like no immediate need for anything like this. So um, so uh, last week I was in Sweden, I talked with a not like car company, but a company you probably all know. And they have used different versions of the cloth, one had like Snapchat, and they like specifically said that they really enjoyed the additional feedback. So they're using it for uh, doing assembly validation. Can we put this truck together? And many of those things are not as simple. So one of the issues that they have is they have to assemble and disassemble vehicles in poses where they cannot see what they're doing physically, so uh, where, where they cannot see what they're doing. So they're using the force to give them feedback as a, a mechanic or a person in the installation process would also physically need to do. And in that case, 
it gives them a very specific feedback that is similar to reality. And that's also something they need, something they cannot do with an optical system, like with motion or something like that. But that's because it answers a need, so to say. If you give the glove to, if you have kids or anyone, you give it to them and you give it and you give a showcase, they're like, wow. But that's the same sense that you like get 200 inch TV and one of them also be like, wow, right? And yeah. it's like in that sense, people are amazed by it. They think it's really cool. But for raw adaptation, there needs to be something that gives them a need for it or a desire for it. Like I, I would say, like if we go back to the previous question, is there a killer app? The examples that you gave are definitely not killer apps. They're like the expected logical uh, adaptation, right? Like with mobile phones, business people had mobile phones because they were important and they needed to talk. But now every teenager scrolls for hours on TikTok and TikTok or Facebook is the killer app in that sense. Um, and I don't think any of us here can tell all the killer apps is going to be whatever, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Julian. Yes, like to try something here in Spain about this sport. Uh, because we, we had a, 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 a research project around the SS topic, and we discovered that when you are in VR, you are focused on one task. And the, the fact that the cross modality and the fact that you use your to really use the feedback on your fingers is often used when you are doing twice or other things. You are looking someone or somewhere and you are doing something, you are, for example, your kitchen and you are doing stuff and you are looking at another, and you use this feedback. In VR, when you put your headset, right. Right. yeah, yeah. Okay, exactly. When you use the VR, you are really focused on the task and all the, your perception, visual perception is focused on the task. And that's the reason why sometimes users um, miss a little bit of, uh, the interest of this feedback because they, they don't really know how it could uh, at least uh, possibly combine the uh, visual or, or replace the visual. And uh, I think uh, to, to complete what, what was said by colleagues here, we are selling values via Arctic. At least for you, for you to just want to explore using this, this but for real industrial, then for me, for, for the moment, I don't see any really uh, huge added value concerned to the interactions. Yes, Ferran. Can you speak up? Uh, it depends also on the type of fidelity that we can achieve with type of feedback on positive side. I don't know, few actuators maybe for awareness is good, so I just may have okay, I'm going to touch something. If you really want to do a fine grain manipulation task, which might be of interest for a lot of training uh, applications. I mean, these are less that you have uh, a high fidelity of, of the interaction, maybe it's not really worth it, but if I get something that should be perfect and I get something that is so so maybe for the learning is at least for the fine grain manipulation. So I think also it really depends a lot on the application of the, 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 the needs of this position and try because you just need to know if there might be in contact or not. But my brain is maybe are good enough because it's cheap uh, or well or uh, the ropes. But if you really want to have this high identity association, in this case then it's not always mm. So one question for Nanos. Did you ever consider to sell your glove because of the vibration feature and not because of the localization orientation? Could you maybe rephrase it? So I can give you the context why I mean. Could you, could you see a customer that wants to have the vibration but is not necessarily using VR? <laughs> but I would say it would be very niche, but even more niche than I have to be careful for the Yeah, there are definitely. Yeah, they're definitely use cases, but I would say that um, in many cases it probably doesn't work out because of the associated cost or something. But if, if you just want to give feedback 
pumped on the solid part, for example, on the sticker, sort of. Um, like a, a device like that itself doesn't need to be or at least like if you take the current technology that we have, it's L race, it's like an advanced kind of fiber technology back. Um, but I think in many cases it's only used in addition to something. So in a car, for example, they use in some cars they use uh, vibration feedback to communicate something is going wrong or there's something you should pay attention or you're colliding or something like that. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that you could accelerate to play the violin because you give the cue which should be now that movement that uh, I mean that you have so shown in, in your video? So it would be a teaching tool <laughs> instead of. Yeah, if you want to simulate something like this, I think data restrictions or something. Like that. But you can have feedback to confirm that what you're doing is correct or incorrect. It can be a confirmation of some sort. Um, and that can also be like someone said that you my house, right? Sure, I know by that someone is ringing the bell. So, like I would say, in everyday life, we are not really augmenting our life mm -hmm. in that sense. Right? You have a phone and your phone is telling you your fridge is empty. Right? That's like how we're now making things smart. But I would say I don't really see only feedback as, as a standalone mm -hmm. thing. I mean, kids learn to dance with these <laughs> carpets where they have to stand, where they see where, where they see the light going on. And, and they become great dancers, actually, much greater than those that are not using this technology, I, I think, in, in yeah, this sense. I mean, if there is some kind of need or some kind of thing that people enjoy to do, then it's definitely a good way to, to incorporate that in, in the process. Yeah, specifically, when you, we are thinking about precision, for example. I mean, when, when you play violin, a lot has to do that you are precise in timing and maybe this vibration could give the timing. Yeah, I would say that the downside of the violin as an example is that auditory feedback is usually driving. <laughs> like if you, you realize that you're playing well on it, so you already have that confirmation. Um, but there might be other things where there is no audio or there is no vision. There is something else that it's either trying to be or adding to. <laughs> Oh, yes, Vera. One last comment. Also, I think it's uh, something that has been also changed in the past years is the tracking technology for hands, so it's getting better and better. And basically, when you are in an appear application and you see your hands, you can move your hands, you can interact with your hands. The first thing it gets frustrated is that you cannot touch them. And because, I mean, it feels weird to see your hands, okay, at some point you can incarnate this body and see that you have your hands and you can just touch it. But rapidly, when you start touching things and trying to do stuff, it gets totally, uh, I'd say, realistic. It's, it doesn't work. It's, uh, it rapidly breaks in how to do it. I don't know anything is, is tangible about the thing. I think that's something that also might be a change is this. More and more of these applications are there. And that for sure with this popular aspect of comes with them. I think that the next step is much more. Yeah, yeah. I, I was extremely thrilled when I tested your demo with being able to sense the depth of touch. Actually, that uh, that we do not have. I mean, you don't have it. You don't measure the force. You you make only a, a, a pure virtual analogy that that is quite striking. I think, and I. So we need to invent uh, Red Bull because Red Bull, I think, as a drink, nobody would have loved to to invent <laughs> from from its pure taste to when it did not exist. <laughs>
Okay. Um, I mean, we were talking about markets, so we got one answer about markets that it's really about focusing on uh, on a professional market, on on a specialized market versus a consumer market where probably the price sensitivity is is too high, or or what were the exact reasons for not going to a consumer market, Unai? Well, probably. I, I don't see a clear, uh, clear app or a clear application for the consumer market, like the, uh, the, the consumer to acquire these kinds of prices. I think for the consumer market, we are part of now the industrial market, but I think uh, it's still uh, some kind of prices we are going to, to integrate in the solutions with the app. So, my experience is uh, uh, we are experiencing in the industrial market, so we don't have any kind of experience in the consumer market, but we are looking at what is going on, on with HMDs and something like this, and the problems that they uh, are having uh, to entry in the mainstream mode in the consumer market with uh, mm -hmm. the prices now. So, I think it's a uh, Closing market. Yeah. And you experience this market <laughs> on daily basis yes. because you are in the middle of it all the time. So I think uh, it's it's well taken uh, your your advice here. I mean, implicitly we are we're talking about about barriers. Um, we we set price is probably a barrier. Uh, do we have now thinking out of, of the box a little bit, do we have uh, to consider or do we need to consider much more of the barriers that, uh, I mean, we are here, the consortium here is like in a club of believers and, and, and probably we, we need to get also indication from outside about about barriers that be believers do not recognize the, um, sufficiently well. So that's why I place this question here. And maybe again, when I allow to, to start with, 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 with you, uh, Jorge or any other. The, the main barrier maybe it's related with one topic we called before. It's like, I mean, how big is the problem? <laughs> This device or this technology is solving. So I think that's that's the main barrier where, because for sure it can be something really cool, might be used in many industries, but how big is the problem it is solving? Because perhaps, I mean, taking account our experience, sometimes with some customers applying VR were not, was not even a solution, but it was a barrier and it was creating a problem to the customer themselves. I don't know if I explained myself properly. Like a strange look, but no, I, I uh, okay. What I understand is that you brought the problem in, except uh, it, it, and not the solution That's in right. some cases. Yes, That's right. That's right. Because I mean, perhaps maybe I see it from the point of view of the, of the neuro rehabilitation. Okay, it might be a solution if the if we do not need to be calibrating it uh, like every moment, but. If it, if, as we were speaking before, if we need to spend a lot of time calibrating it, it's not really a solution because it's adding up uh, some extra time to the professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, one, one thing could be, I mean, we know aging is not only on the side of the brain, but it's also on the side of your sensors. So is there specific haptic therapy that you would see? Uh, yeah, that could be a use case. Yeah, I don't know how it's uh, in English. Uh, Fine. Yeah, yes, fine, fine motor, motor or, yeah. Perhaps there is kind of rehabilitation, I think it could provide a big value. 
Yeah, I mean, the current clinical practice is to use uh, melted uh, uh, candle, <laughs> candle wax or other hot therapy or things like that. So at the moment, that's what, what is given as a therapy. Or then there are gloves that you can wear like metal gloves and then they put electricity and activate all sensors, uh, not specific. I don't really know. Not an expert. Well, not to in involved in a company who has a approach to help people to rehabilitate in terms of fight motion with hands. And I think we tried sometimes we are using in motion to just to put the VR. No, it's not VR, it's with a screen, a way to put the game uh, to the patient in front of the team. And uh, he moves the, the fingers say, to, to try to achieve some of the kind of games, some kind of objectives in games. So, for example, in this uh, kind of therapist, uh, uh, mix this kind of uh, games, uh, playing games where the patient is uh, uh, trying to move the fingers with some kind of electrostimulation to help. Uh, moving the fingers or to give uh, them some kind of uh, other feedback would be uh, something I think we will have with various type of problem related to or problem going up with some kind of electrostimulation device you have for the foot. So this could be something interesting uh, to react with this kind of loops we have the uh, position of the fingers and we will uh, use the other stimulation to help the patients to move the fingers or to, or to I don't know, we need to do the same thing too. But. Okay, yeah. Um, in terms of, of barriers, I mean, we had hype for the little use or is price not really a concern? The price uh, is never. Uh, it's only a concern when the, when yeah, what you depending give. Depending on the value that yeah. you are adding to the customer, so I, I don't know what is going to be the price of this kind of, of devices. But I think the, the problem probably in the moment uh, you are in this kind of project in, in the general you are the price is not the, the problem. For me, the problem is what is the uh, going to be the value that we are going to give to the our customer. Uh, using uh, this uh, new device, uh, so the price need to be the same as the value that we are going to give to them. So if we uh, had a customer that we give a, a lot of value, they are going to pay a lot of money over this uh, in the future. So, uh, but we, we said before when we are not using this kind of feedback. Yes, in virtual reality, we are going to uh, move our finger and go inside the box, a, a cube for something. When we are using this kind of feedback, we are going inside the cube too, but we are going to feel some kind of uh, sensation. So, in which case, this uh, value, uh, of this new feature, create a good value to pay more for having this kind of device? This is the main question, and this is it has a relationship not only with the price, but with the uh, uh, features and the level of uh, fidelity that you are going to achieve with this kind of new technology. That is, I think, something that you were talking about during this morning. So this is mm -hmm. this balance, no? Something that we need to. Yeah. Yes, Matthias. Yeah, I wanted to say, I think, I mean, how we envision this project from the very start, and the Murai idea, very, very interesting, I mean, perspective. But I think that we now are considering that what we are developing is an add on to the existing VR applications. But to be honest, I think this is also something that you open the market for something that is non existing. For instance, what, what Malus is now doing with this new world that allows this kinematic tracking that didn't exist until yesterday. It's opening completely different level of, of applications. And I think that, I mean, from the perspective of how we envision the development and what we are actually trying to achieve, 
We foresee that this is something that, of course, there are many barriers, but I think this is also a way of overcoming existing barriers in VR. Because, like Pena said, there are people that simply try out this VR, and because they cannot really feel anything but only see, and then there is, you know, like they don't want to use it. So, if we are considering that this can be, I mean, in future for sure, we, we are going to spread it more and more, and there will be more and more mass consumer uh, applications. We believe that this is getting that can make this push. Because a lot of people would like to buy it exactly because of uh, this uh, additional application where somebody can touch something. That you can, you are able to feel this feeling. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm alive, so I, I really don't know how, how, how it seems in the market, from the market perspective. But from the personal perspective, I think that it's, it's, uh, it's, it would be really a uh, great uh, addition to the VR to have this uh, option. For instance, what Strachner showed in his uh, study, to have this uh, ability to transmit information about textures, so basically touching something. Similar like this tracking of the fingers, very precisely. I don't know if you care from the mouse like calculation how much with this uh, or more precise tracking, you're actually opening new market for yourself, I guess. You have a completely different pretty close to financial. You have some I mean prognosis now already that you, you do uh, how much you expect to spread due to this. You're not looking at this as an add on now, you will give better to existing plants, but you attract. <coughs> <clears throat> I would say, like on the tracking side, so far we've only focused on motion capture and peripherals. But we know that there is the medical side, the comic side, of the, I don't know, the enablement side. There is a strong interest, but there are very specific requirements in terms of accuracy, for example. But all of these things become possible now or in the future or something. So this is. But this is also like with a mobile phone or like with other technology, there is a certain cutoff point or, or a certain moment where the technology has matured enough that it can inspire different people it can, and it can like accelerate uh, yeah, other technological development. Actually, my question is now when you're thinking about put, pushing this to the market, are you able to really advertise this as something that will provide your existing clients? Yeah. Uh, additional benefits for using this. Do you see that this, this is actually the main thing, or do you perceive that uh, this will actually be offered, like I saw in the video, you know, like people uh, playing violin, this is something that you didn't do before. For instance, you, uh, of course, it will be in the segment of industry, in the segment of training, but it will be completely different uh, applications, I guess. Yeah, I went with different scenarios. Yeah, I would say for us, like the, the main growth we see with this new technology is from people who are interested in the technology, but perceive. Was a limiting factor in that sense. And I can only assume that, for example, realistic feedback might also be, in a similar fashion, a limiting factor for many other people. So we don't expect, in our growth, we expect to double or triple our sales. But our expectation is not our existing customers like to you know, offer, but the ability to reach new customers. Exactly. In that sense. exactly. And this is why I, I mean this. Yeah, this was my comment. I just think that we should focus on how, how basically what would be the killer app. Killer app needs to be something that doesn't exist. Not how much value we will add to the existing applications. That's, I, 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 I. Okay, so uh, 